Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. So we've been staying at our friends, the Miller, in this beautiful bedroom that they've uh, made so homely for us. We're fresh, we're clean, and we've had two rest days, which has been great, and they've really looked after us. But today, Michelle and I are gonna be hitting the road again. It's gonna be hard to motivate, but also take a look at this. We've actually packed almost 10 kilos of our uh, backpack away, stuff we don't need. So we've bought a few extra little bits and pieces. We, we bought a, a couple of hiking sticks. We're gonna give those a try. They weren't expensive. We bought a couple of charging blocks so we can charge stuff to stay in touch with you guys. Uh, and we bought an extra blanket, but we've, we've sent back a great deal more uh, to our good mate, Rick. Thank you, Rick. And um, yeah, we're ready to hit the road again. It's been such a beautiful stay with a wonderful, wonderful family. Thank you very much. I'm so sad and I'm also so jealous of just what I come from. How cool is this? Day after our rest break with uh, Nat and David, the Millers, and we're down here. G'day. Yeah. How are you? Doing a little detour. Look at this. How cool is this? So because, whoa. Wow, look at this old bridge, just missing, old bridge. does it? This is an old road. This would have been an old road. So people, I think people can still drive through it. They can. So cars can still come through here and so can the water. But yeah, look, and as to prove the point, here comes a car, one of the taxis. It's like wacky races, she reckons. Wow. Wow, he's really struggling. Wow. It's not often the cars come through this route. What a good shortcut. And can you trust that you won't blow away in the wind? I like that. See, things are sent for a reason. Things are sent for a reason. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, so what's happened is no one can get over because the bridge is, the bridge is stuck up. So they're all doing a Yui at the top here. I'm going through that fantastic little old tunnel, but some of them are a bit mindful, a bit frightened of it. So uh, they'd rather wait. Could be an hour or two though. So this is the bridge. This is a hydraulic bridge across the 4th and Clyde Canal, I think it's correctly named. And it's got stuck in the up position. Not to, not to worry, we got round it and now we're gonna go over that little tunnel. This is called Bonnie Bridge and that is the ra radicat pen they call it that we just walked under. How cool. When the uh, the area of Falkirk, I think that's the next big town that we'll get to. And then I think this canal breaks off to the Union Canal and we'll be walking along canals hopefully for quite a while now. It should be beautiful because canals are flat. I like flat. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that hill was, it was a bit of a, a bit of a puffer. Up. puffer. <laughs> All the way to Land's End. Wouldn't that be nice? Canals, if they joined up all the way to Land's End, that would be so good. 
Good day. We like canals. There are even two abreast. We can walk together. <laughs> we can walk together. We can even hold hold hands. This, by the way, is Outlander country. For those of you that watch it, I haven't, sorry, I haven't seen it, but I'm told this is the area in the studios we just passed a moment ago is where all the Outlander series is filmed. And there's a, there's a small, well not small, it's a huge indoor hangar, I think, with all the towns and the villages. You can't go in there, but it's, it's within our 20 minutes walk probably of where we are right now. So if you're an Outlander fan, this, this part of the canal, we're close to the land. Hello fella, hello. We've just done a live stream walking down this canal and this beautiful piece of uh, engineering popped up. It's called the, uh, the Full Kirk Wheel. I'm gonna walk over and see if I can get a bit of a closer up film. It's an amazing, possibly one of the most amazing uh, canal locks in the world. It's a massive, um, let's go and have a look at it. It's a massive feat of engineering, basically. What happens, it's a sort of almost a pendulum of, of uh, uh, like a, oh, what's the word? I'm, I'm already, my brain's already getting foggy. Like a sort of Catherine wheel, almost like a spinning wheel where actually one side picks up the boats and, and lifts them and puts them uh, through the lock system, the lower. I think it actually crosses between two canals rather than actually being a lock that uh, lowers and hires the canals. I think it takes possibly boats from one side to the other. Let's go and have a look. Let's find out about it together. A swing bridge with bounce. Wow. There's some lovely little narrow boats down there. And this is a swing bridge or, or a, yeah, a rotating bridge for, for pedestrians. Go on then, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> this fella's coming down, it's a nice bank, isn't it? The Falkirk wheel, probably be 20 pounds to go in, Michelle and I go straight past it. <laughs> so a revolutionary genius, the world's first and only rotating boat lift. 1.2, oh, 1200 tons over a thousand construction staff to build it. It's for 14,868 bolts. Power by using the sound by hand. Uh, rotates 180 degrees in under five minutes. Powered by using the energy of just six. Eight. Sorry. Powered by the energy of just eight kettles. So that is pretty amazing. So as I said before, when we were looking at it, you've got two gondolas or sort of water channels and this thing swings like a a big pendulum and there's an aqueduct in the top. So it obviously takes the boats up, they go through the aqueduct into the second one, I'm guessing, and back down. So let's go and have a look at it. The gentleman is just telling us that the, uh, the Kelpies at the end of the canal, we're not walking down. So uh, that's a bit of a bummer. Um, we won't get to see the Kelpies. I'll put a picture up for you, but uh, not to worry, at least we get to see uh, the full Kirk wheel. So, oh, they do boat trips over it. So, <laughs> they're using it as a tourist attraction. So this sort of like canal boat, probably every, I don't know, every hour or so, they'll uh, put a boat in there and you can have a ride on it. How cool is that? So look, the boats, come into the canal here, they come into this trough, or uh, what did they call it? Uh, they had a name, didn't they? Look at the size of this thing. So, oh, there it is. Oh, there's a cafe there. Yeah, a little cafe there. Sorry, Michelle, we haven't walked enough for a cafe. <laughs> So it brings them from this canal to the other canal. 
via this aqueduct up here. How cool is that? So how do we get to our other canal? Well, I think we can scoop round the puppy. Or we go out that gate back that way if you want. I think we've got to walk up where these people yeah, are walking. The fences all the way along. So if you want to actually see that in operation as we saw it, oh but look at the cog on there. <laughs> so if you want to actually see the um the thing in action, I'll link to the live stream where we actually stumbled across this while it was working, which is kind of cool. I think this is a, a no way through here. So that's probably why got a fence across it but luckily the fence is open so we can get through a little shortcut up to the uh, Union Canal which is our next path so we were just walking on the Forth and Clyde Canal and we're heading up to the Union Canal not by way of that amazing piece of engineering but by this amazing piece of engineering our legs and Michelle's got a snack out for me do we need energy we got a Cadbury's brunch bar okay see you the other side so there's the aqueduct so I'm starting to understand a bit more how this worked nice little stone wall here possible overnight camping spot up there <laughs> we don't need to stop yet we haven't been going long enough and we're going through one of these beautiful old tunnels and we're testing out our hiking sticks they're probably not appropriate for the canal walk to be honest but we were just testing them up that hill so this is the rough castle tunnel it's 180 meters in length and there we go Ooh, look at this Woo, woo. Woo. Got to do it, haven't you? So this is one of those old canal tunnels. I'm not sure if it is that old, to be honest, but uh, I suspect it is. Now, I, uh, actually, it may be newer. They may have built it when they joined the two canals up, unless there was another method at some point for joining up the two canals. Considering the last bit of the walk has been quite sunny, it feels quite wintry under here. But anyway, We'll keep the camera going. So if we'd have stayed on uh, the previous canal, we would have seen the Kelpies, which are quite an interesting sculpture that's up near Edinburgh. Our friends have said, you know, go and see them, but it's just not on our path, not by quite a long way, because we're crossing over onto the Union Canal. And uh, quite happy to be doing so, because at least it's heading south in the right direction for us 180 meters under what i'm not sure probably a road maybe or uh, just a, a hill but now we open up here into only opened in the hours of daylight ah so they closed this as well that's a bit of luck we came through when we did then and didn't leave it a few hours um See the acoustic change and we're on now at the very beginning of the Union Canal. Is that what it is, Michelle? Yep, yep it is. Built in 18 something. Uh, I'll put the sign up, I just took a photograph. It's quite remarkable. It's blue skies for miles. The sun has just been for the last hour behind that one bank of clouds. It refuses to come out. And now I can barely feel my ears. It's so cold compared to an hour ago. It feels freezing. And uh, it's just, if the sun could be anywhere up in the sky at the moment, and it's just as if that cloud there has just taken the sun and just said, sod it. Like the wind blew into town, kidnapped the sun and stole its brother. You're not having it. It's been there forever. Just had to put my hat on, I can't feel my ears. My nose is frozen and it really feels like winter is starting to creep in, even though we're really only in the very first days of autumn. Oh, I hope we can walk fast enough to get down to the warmth of Portugal and Spain. <laughs> oh. 
I'm looking at this canal and wondering if it's used. It's really weedy, uh, quite overgrown. And I haven't seen any boats up here yet. Now the other canal below us is much cleaner and wider and well maintained. So whether the Union Canal is a, is a working sort of holiday canal or not, I'm not sure. We've ha met uh, another Land's End to John O'Groats Walker, a guy coming up country. That was amazing. Whole family of swans. The parents have landed and the four signets. signets are still flying. Amazing. So we met a guy who was walking up country and he did say that the Union Canal was quite bad at stages for walking along. And uh, at the moment, no, it's perfectly good. But we're a bit wary when we're gonna come across that. So, uh, uh, I hope it stays nice. And I hope that sun eventually comes out from behind that cloud and gives us a... And it's starting to get through. It just gives, gives a bit of its heat for the rest of the day. Such a lovely stretch of canal. The Union Canal. There's four signets, very grown up signets. And uh, the mother or the father Mother and father are here. So it's such a beautiful part of the canal and I get a feeling that it's not being used by boats, which is all right. I mean, the wildlife are using it. But what does sadden me a little bit is that that amazing piece of, that amazing piece of engineering is really just, little bit of a upsy downy for the odd tourist to go up and down up and down because if this part of the canal is not being used and it does look bogged down with weed and branches that means that m amazing piece of engineering is just it's nothing it's not there as a functioning thing and i wonder often as is the case in these countries in sort of modern countries is the fee to use it is just too high it should be free and maybe if it was a free uh, link between the two canals then people would use it constantly and uh, and this canal would would come back to life not saying that it's not having any life in it because certainly the birds there's a, a drake a male drake and his wife swimming down there certainly the birds and uh, the wildlife are using it. I never knew that uh, Glasgow and Edinburgh were geographically so close if that was a halfway mark back there and it's only 34 miles. Uh, that means it's only about just over 60 miles between those two great cities. And I always thought they were further apart. Interesting. Well, you can see how deep the pond weed is on this uh, bank. I was just saying, Michelle, that um, it's a bit odd having that big wheel there when there's no boats using the actual canal yeah. so it means it's just there as a sort of tourist, tourist thing things maybe just to go up and down maybe they're trying to attract people to use this half of the canal oh. the other the lower canal is used yeah I think it's Whoop. good day <laughs> so, <laughs> no worries thanks yeah it just seems at the potential camping spot <laughs> it just seems a bit odd to have something so expensive that they built and then them not putting boats between the two canals so it's literally just an upsy daisy for tourists to get on that little boat and go up come 10 meters and go back down that's a bit like having a roundabout at the end of a motorway it went nowhere yeah. a bit odd 
So what time is it now? About four yeah. o'clock and we've just stopped for a little bit of a, a coffee and a sandwich and we're walking again. Now I said to Michelle, what we need to do is be a bit more disciplined with our time. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Got to do it's it. A it's a tunnel. Um, got to be a bit more disciplined. I think if we do two and a half hours walking, a break, two and a half hours walking, a break, and two and a half hours walking, so we get seven and a half hours approximately walking a day, but have more regular breaks with, with food, because we found in the Highlands we weren't stopping often, frequently enough, and I think our energy levels, we were sometimes, we just didn't have enough food in our system for the walks that we were doing. Quite often we were doing four and five hours without a break. I think if we can stick to that, we'll still be getting nearly seven and a half, eight hours walking a day, but we'll also uh, be getting fully fueled up. Right. So, that's the plan. I've just set uh, an alarm to remind me in two hours time that it's the end of our day. We should start to look for somewhere to camp. That gives us between half hour and an hour to find a pitch. If we get one early, great. If we get one late, we just have to get into a routine, some sort of routine, yeah? yeah. Okay. Be more disciplined with the map walking people as well. So. Yeah, so we get more and more miles and kilometers every day, which is uh, gonna see this whole beautiful walk <laughs> finished before the winter sets in too harsh. All right. See you the other side. Wow. I think there's a huge tunnel coming up. You can possibly see a red and green traffic light flashing. That's going to be exciting. It'll be cold though, Michelle. Oh, I've got my coat on. I'm Is it a wet. long tunnel? I don't know. I don't know. I know red and green flashing lights mean um, proceed with caution. Okay. So it looks like you possibly can have the option to go over the tunnel. <laughs> Around that zigzag of hills. Up a zigzag up a hill or through a tunnel? I think I'll well, go through a tunnel. Through a cold <laughs> tunnel. That's all right, I've got my coat on and my hood up. Right. Okay. Tripping, slipping hazards, narrow towpath and poor visibility in the tunnel. Cyclists must dismount. I reckon this is a special tunnel. Are you ready? I know I am. Check the battery. Michelle and I are walking through this amazing tunnel. This is a canal tunnel. And look at the calcium buildup on these walls. Look at that. That's fantastic. It's absolutely beautiful. So I love these old tunnels. And you would have had the old cop ponies coming along here pulling the uh, canal boats and it's dripping on us. The water is dripping. This is amazing. And there's a... Uh, Couple coming towards us. I think some dogs coming towards us now as well. Hello, guys. Hello. Three of them. Four of them. There you go. Look. Good day. Hi. Oh, People coming through the tunnel. It's amazing. This is fantastic. I love this tunnel. Canal tunnel. Beautiful. Here we are. We're coming to the end. This was a. Uh, approximately 600 meters, about half a mile in length, if I've got my measurements right. And a lot of fun to walk through, I've really enjoyed it. Like I say, this old towpath would have had cob ponies and ponies pulling old boats through. There she is. That's one super tunnel. Wow, it's a bitter cold morning this morning on this section of the Union Canal that we're on. There's a, I don't know if it shows it, but uh, I'll turn the camera and get another shot. It's really industrial out there. And uh, all through the night, there's a howl, almost like a, of a motorway. Oh, sorry, I'm very sleepy, I just woke up. Uh, and there's lots of housing around here. And I think it comes from all those chimneys, uh, whatever they're producing down there. So they never get any peace. From that noise it's like a roar we've heard it all through the night it sounds like you're next to a motorway like a sort of roar of a motorway but i'm pretty sure whatever that industry is down there makes that noise but it's bitter cold today it was cold last night but we were warm in the warm in the tent warm in bed 
but I think it went down to about four degrees, maybe even lower last night. Now I'm in and actually under the Union Canal. Look at this. That's the canal banks. That's the other canal bank. I'm under the Union Canal now. There isn't many times in your life that you'd be able to say you've been under a canal.